Hi, I'm Jack Parr. And I'm Ron Halpern. This project got started when my wife, who's a public school teacher, came home and asked me if we could go to Washington, D.C. for a rally to defend public education. So I said, heck yeah. Grab my camera and we we're off. When we were in D.C., I realized that there was a story that really needed to be told here, so I recruited fellow filmmaker Ron Halpern. I knew about Jack's trip to D.C., and I've always been interested in public education because my mom taught third grade for 25 years in New Jersey, and I was unhappy about the way today's teachers were being treated. After reviewing footage from D.C., I realized we needed to take the next step to tell the truth about the public education takeover. Here's a piece we put together, but we need your help to tell the whole story. For Hudson Valley, many districts reported that more than 25% of their students opted out. Almost 30,000 teachers and their support staff have walked out over reforms sought by the city's powerful mayor. Raise your voices, go to your elected officials, go to your superintendents, give them those list of demands because we demand justice right now. What's at stake for the future of our country if this educational policy is not changed? We are going to have the 99% working for the 1%. We are going to create an oligarchy in this country. We'll become more of a, a one-track, almost robotized nation. I just picture kids all being cued to say the same thing at the same time and, and losing their individuality. There, there's almost a full frontal attack on the teaching profession. We have the highest concentration of wealth in a small number of hands since the late 19th century. It corrupts everything, but especially education. Public education from kindergarten through high school pulls in more than $500 billion in taxpayer revenues every year. And crony capitalists and politicians alike are cashing in. Microsoft has a partnership with Pearson, who's the biggest publishing company in the world, who's creating the resources, the tests, the even grading of the tests, Pearson. When they say they want to integrate it with software and hardware, who's software and hardware? So if you take a look and you follow the money the way they did back in Watergate, you'd be able to see that there is the same kind of Gilded Age set of foundations that are contributing money that are somehow trickling back into the pockets of the corporations they really represent. Data is going into no man's land. We take scores and scores of tests. We have preschoolers in Chicago that take 17 standardized tests a school year. 17. 1,700 elementary, middle, and high school students opted out of taking the park test. There was five kids that I was with. They took the test? Yeah. Like almost the entire auditorium was filled with kids that didn't take it. Not a single junior showed up to take the Common Core Smarter Balance test this week. You develop your own lesson plans according to your standards that you set for each individual child Woo! in that class. Yeah! Evaluating teachers by test scores, which is one of the big principles of the, these corporate reformers, has been a disaster. If your job depends on how well these 20 kids do on a test, I mean, you're, you're going to spend the better part of your job teaching those kids how to take that test and focusing on that test. And, you know, that, that doesn't promote any kind of real learning. It doesn't get the kids excited about school or about learning. And, uh, you know, and it doesn't, and it doesn't, it doesn't, raise a generation of critical thinkers who are going to be the ones who solve the serious problems that this generation is going to leave for. When schools and teachers are coerced into fo focusing on tests, then a lot of other things get cut out and it, and it has a really bad effect. I, that's what these corporate reformers want. They want a group of people who are test-taking drones. Do you think it's good for the students or bad for the students that teachers are guaranteed their jobs for life? First of all, teachers are not guaranteed their jobs for life. The way you ask that question, you act like that's a fact. Teachers have never been guaranteed their jobs for life. Teachers that are incompetent can always be fired. You've focused a lot of time and money and one of the best lawyers in the country on an issue like tenure. When many people say that 
budget cuts to schools and inadequate funding is really the reason why there's inequality. And because parents don't really know, most people don't know about what tenure is, and it's really the right to free speech. It's really the right of due process, and it's really the ability to be able to do the kinds of things that we know teachers can do. And the courage to kind of stand up to some of those things. And it's tough, but you know, when you do stand, you're better off than if you just keep allowing things to happen. You know, I couldn't keep allowing the school to make me do things that I couldn't just didn't want to do so I left you know and people want you to stay in there but if you're going to stay in there then you got to be able to affect change in some way so to you know find a way to stand up voice your concerns and let people know that you're the expert you know what's going on and what's happening is not right is there a solution to what's going on yes but it's it's that things are going to get so bad that the parents are going to revolt, the students are going to revolt, the teachers are going to revolt, which has happened with us in New York State. If we believe in a democracy, then we have to believe that public education is a cornerstone of that democracy. And what we're seeing happen is the democracy slowly being stripped away piece by piece. You don't make cookie cutter, uh, uh, you know, patterns for each student to fit in it's for your labor force of the future. And when the parents realize that their kids are, you know, are chess pieces to be played in an elaborate game by the richest and wealthiest people in America. They're going to get very angry. So if we can get parents and teachers on the same page, then we can all educate each other, collaborate with each other, and do what Americans have done through our history. Gone to the freaking voting booth and vote the bums out. There's nothing else I'd rather do. If you think I'm teaching for the money, ha! I got into teaching. I'm sorry. I didn't have to work. I would still be probably much doing the same thing I was doing now. I got into teaching because I had a teacher that made a difference for me. I was the first person in my family to go to college. And so I guess I wanted to be able to do that to other children. I think of how would I want somebody to work with my kids and what if my kid was a pain in the butt? What would I want a teacher to do with them? Would I want that teacher to give up on them or figure out a way to work with them? And then that, that helps motivate me as a teacher. And I say I would never give up on a kid. I've always believed that education is the only aspect of our society that we really need to be intentional about. When a student comes up to me at graduation and says to me, thank you for being there when I needed somebody, Thank you for caring. Thank you for getting me interested in something that I walked into your class and said, I'm never gonna like this. When that student comes up to me and does that, that means more to me than any paycheck. We are up against an enormous money machine. We, are, we really are. Between all of these people I've mentioned, the Waltons, the Broads, the Gates, the, you know, all of them, Koch brothers, it's an enormous money machine. These billionaires don't send their children to public schools. These are policies for other people's children. So when you see something come up on a kickstart, for example, um, and you see an independent filmmaker who's trying to get the truth out, we have to do that. We have, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen, whatever, we have to be able to say, I'm okay with giving what I can because the truth is important to me. And the truth is not bought. Give what you can because that's the truth. Not what the one percenters are putting out, but what is happening here. If you want America to keep the great public school system that made, that, that made it such a great country, you're gonna have to fight for it. And we need a film like this that tells the real story of what's going on. So support this film. The driving reason for your support of this project should be to amplify the voices of the teacher and their importance to a healthy society. We want to create a movement that restores the best parts of the public school system that was the envy of the world when I was growing up. The voice of the educator needs to be heard, so please give what you can and support our film.